So season 5 of Apex Legends is live, it's here, it finally came out yesterday. We got the new legend Loba, we're going to talk about everything you can do with her, her abilities, and how I think about her, how to use her, as well as some massive changes to the overall meta for Apex Legends. What's going on guys, Challenge here, and today we're going to be talking about all things Apex Legends with Season 5. Now first and foremost, the main topic of this video will be Loba. How do you use her, what her abilities do, and is she worth it in the long haul? Now, plain and simple, with some of the changes we're not going to talk about just yet, Loba has become my new main in Apex Legends. I love her mobility, I love her ultimate, I just think she, overall she is the best legend for me, for my playstyle. Yes, Pathfinder, you are getting a back border I'm putting you in the shelves yeah they have done some serious damage to my boy but with that being said her tactical basically ability is burglar's best friend so she's able to teleport to hard to reach places or escape trouble quickly by throwing you know her jump travel bracelet now how far does this work how you know how far can you throw this on an even playing field that means like you know there's no elevation pretty much I tested out you can throw 75 meters and you basically throw it now it is a long duration of time when you throw it so don't expect to be moving as fast as Pathfinder when you do throw it do realize that it's not as quick as you know zipping out of a situation now with that being said you can also you know god forbid you just need to get the hell out there and maybe you threw it above a building but you want to get to the top of that building you can basically throw it above hold r2 or you know right bumper on you know xbox or whatever it is on pc and you basically pull it down to the ground and this is a very nice feature you basically just get the full range control of the bracelet so you don't have to be too precise but you do gotta you know understand projectile travel and all that good stuff and on top of that it basically tells you how far you are throwing it as you see here on screen as as well as how far it's traveling and the distance it is at when it comes to how far you threw it and also to you basically see a projectile base on the ground of where it's going and how it is let's say you set it r2 this is exactly where it's going to land so some helpful you know ui features for this ability that basically gives you as much information as possible when you throw it now her ultimate is a black market bouquet so you basically place a portable device that allows you to teleport nearby loot to your inventory each friendly or enemy legend can take up to two items now this range is pretty substantial pretty much you can if you throw it in the middle of most areas you can get the whole area and you can get all the loot and with the newest addition in terms of these ultimate charge up stations this is a great thing to use in the beginning of a game if you really really need a body armor and at least one gun but remember you are capped at two items so do be selective with those two items now our passive ability is I for quality, so basically nearby epic and legendary loot can be seen through walls. Now it's the same way, it's the same range as their ultimate, but to give exactly a measurement of precise thing, I narrowed it down to about 75 meters, you can see up to epic and legendary things. Now when it comes to epics, they're yellow, you might not see them as well at 75 meters, you will see purple pretty well. But basically, it's not going to enlarge it by no means. It's going to be the same size as the item you see on the ground. So when you're at farther ranges, you can't not see, you know, you, it's hard to see exactly what it is. But when you get closer, you will see epic and legendaries through walls. And I think this is a very helpful feature to find out exactly what you're looking for. Hop ups and, you know, maybe a body armor and backpacks, knockdown shoes. You can find these things very easily. Now, again, it's not crazy powerful because these drops are pretty, you know, not as common. But again, it is a very nice touch to her passive ability and just her overall tool set. And in general, I just love her overall quality and I think she is phenomenal. She, if you're a very mobile, agile player, you like Octane, you like Pathfinder, Loba is going to be for you. And if you want to have a less struggle or less stressful time with your loot situation and you want to, you know, basically you're in cover, you need loot, you need ammo. Her ultimate is phenomenal and it charges fairly quickly when compared to other char ultimate charges. Now real quick, obviously, King's Canyon got a massive overhaul. Got a, not really a massive overhaul, but it got a substantial change. Now a lot of things in the map do feel different. It does flow a lot different and I'm loving it. Now one big thing is they basically took out the Skull Town portion of the map. Now where the map was, do not go to. We tried it out and you die. It's very tragic and, you know, unfortunate. So... That happens and yeah don't go there it doesn't work but you can't go to the skull there is some loot not really worth it i guess there wasn't really much there but besides that that part of the map is gone and if you go over to relay that got extended a good bit 
Now this map is feeling a little bit longer than you know overall a rectangle you know evenly scaled map. I do catch myself sometimes struggling to run across the map. So do keep in mind that depending on where the circle is, you will see farther run times because the map does feel longer with width, but top to bottom still the same size. I don't know what it is. I could be wrong. I could be right. It just feels so much longer. I don't know what it is, but in general, a lot of the changes, new areas in the map are really good and I'm liking what they did with Kings Canyon and I'm excited to see how it ends up being in the future and how it plays out for the rest of the season. Now the UI for Apex Legends has dramatically changed and at first I did not like it, it was uncomfortable, but when you basically look into a death box, things are just drastically different. The weapons are on top, the ammo is in between and everything else is below. It's basically high priority, you know, you know, heals and consumables. They are prioritized on top and other things are on the bottom like attachments. So I think that's a nice, you know, quality of life change. But again, when you guys load in Apex Legends, if you guys haven't already, these death boxes are going to be drastically different. So yeah, do expect to be wild and confused at first, but you will get the hang of it. I got the hang of it fairly quickly. I'm sure you guys will get the hang of it fairly quickly as well. But just know that there is a serious UI change as well as a change in the UI menu in general. If you guys want the battle pass, you got to make sure you guys go to the season five tab above on the bottom, uh, top left that basically has the quest as everything season five in that tab i think it's nice but yeah it's not really straightforward and it took me forever to find the battle pass now last but not least we're gonna be talking about some of the changes that happened to mirage he basically got a massive overhaul so he can now go invisible you know when resing people i think that's a great quality of life and sh you know thing his decoy now lasts 20 seconds he can also control his decoy and when he controls his decoy it mimics his you know movement now, obviously, if you release another decoy, you will obviously destroy the other decoy that you threw before. And Mirage's Life of Party, basically his ultimate, all these Mirages don't, you know, mimic your movement. So these are good quality assurances for, you know, Mirage in general. Now, Path, now not Pathfinder. We're not going to get to Pathfinder yet. That's pretty depressing. But Bloodhound saw something pretty substantial. Basically, she has an increased sonar detection from 3 seconds to 4 seconds. So they, you know, they, they made it longer, which is weird. And it decreased the cooldown from 35 to 25 seconds. In my opinion, Bloodhound is the most powerful legend in the game. Now, if you guys are big Bloodhound fans, you guys, you know, maybe were Bloodhound fans, her tactical, Eye of the Allfather, got some serious, serious buffing. And I don't know how I feel about it. We'll see how it is. But Respawn is fairly good when it comes to their balancing and their data. Now, a small little buff for, you know, Crypto. She can now ping banners while on the drone to warn teammates of nearby squads. So that's, you know, I guess helpful. Now, lifelines increase. You saw a lifeline bin ratio 20%. Remove knockdown shields from the secret compartment pool. I don't care. I don't really use a uh, lifeline that much. Now, Caustic saw something very crazy, and I'm actually surprised they did it. I thought it was a good balancing tool for Caustic, but they removed it. So, friendly gas no longer slows teammates. I know this was a big annoyance for me when it comes to Caustic's on my team. But, yeah, they uh, they don't slow teammates. And now, Caustic traps are no longer triggered from the other side of doors. I think this is nice quality life insurances for caustic now octane saw one of his more you know one change that are, are one to many that come to him now the launch pad cooldown is reduced from 90 seconds to 60 seconds so they're making the launch pad you know quicker basically respawn just highlighted they want to make you know octane more team utility rather than a selfish legend and i think that is great i think octane needs to be more of a team player rather than a selfish player but we gotta see what other updates for octane are planned but yeah right now his launch pad went from 90 seconds to 60 seconds now, Gibby got some good changes, and I'm happy for this one. They reduced the dome shield duration for 18 seconds to 12 seconds. Basically, the idea they saw is that he's very balanced when it comes to individual fights, but when it comes to a team fight, he is really, really strong. I agree with that statement, and I like the change that they made to the dome shield. Now, last but not least, the most tragedy, the, the tragedy with my legend, my main legend, the legend I've been playing for so long, over a year now in Apex Legends, finally saw... A killing blow nerf his grappling hook went from 15 seconds to a whopping 35 seconds yeah rip in the chat for Pathfinder they killed my boy they killed him and I don't know how to feel about it you know Loba is really good she has right now in the game she is a faster mobile character than Pathfinder so I'm gonna be checking out Loba for a good bit I don't know when I'm gonna give Pathfinder a chance but 15 to 35 15 seconds to 35 seconds that's an extra 20 seconds I gotta wait to use my grapple hook and that is a massive massive waiting time in Apex Legends so we'll see if they need to do anything to change you know 
you know his ability and make it maybe more balanced maybe 35 seconds is too much but yeah i'm not using pathfinder anytime soon because that is a serious nerf and hurts now some of the weapon changes the mastiff is now a basic shotgun they did some changes to its overall performance so it's not as powerful as it was legendary but it's still relatively good and the peacekeeper has now swapped the role with the mastiff and become a legendary weapon now these was something i did not expect i did not expect this change at all but i guess they did it and you know i'm fine with it now there's some other changes to other weapons i'm not really going to talk about the art the alternate the re45 the havoc the longbow the wingman they all got some you know decreases in their variations of you know the damage and alternator saws and increased re45 saw an increase in some you know categories but the main thing is that they reintroduced the skull piercer hop up for the longbow dmr and the wingman now with this being you know obviously what they did is that they decided that the skull piercer just needed to be back in the game the wingman and longbow i'm guessing i've seen very dramatic drops in terms of usage rates and effectiveness so they saw that the skull piercer is a good hop up for this despite you know maybe some balancing issues they had before with it but basically the changes they made is you know, dmr with skull piercer is now scaled from 2.5 headshot damage to 2.5 wingman with skull piercer is now scaled from 2.0 headshot damage to 2.25 this is all great and then as well as that they bolted the anvil receiver i think the anvil receiver was kind of a useless you know hop up i didn't really care too much about it it used your ammo a little bit more efficiently you know if you didn't land that shot you kind of just wasted three bullets it was a very annoying tedious hop up to have in your weapon if you chose single fire never really used it don't really care that they bolted it i think that they saw nobody cared for it and they're like you know what let's get rid of it bring back the skull piercer make the longbow and wingman's more competitive weapons because they certainly drop usage rates at least for me when it comes to me checking out these weapons because they don't have skull piercer and skull piercers was such a great perk for that now last but not least they removed the 50 percent heal speed the fast use trait for the gold armor now with that being said they also changed that perk entirely it's a brand new perk now basically they up like uh consumable like little consumable they call it but we're just gonna call it doubled so basically they added a perk where shields and syringes shield cells and syringes get double the amount per use i think this is pretty cool now i understand why they removed the you know the fast use i love the fast use but pretty much if you knock down a person this guy had the thing pop the battery is back full health ready to go ready to battle if you did not have that fast use perk against that fast use person with that perk it was just a struggle gold armor versus non-gold armor was just a really annoying thing as well as the fact that it was just a dumb thing not to you know do because if i had an evo shield red and i had a gold armor i want the gold armor it has a fast use i can i'll sacrifice 25 extra damage for you know a fast use perk now with the red evo i might sacrifice i might sacrifice you know double the amount per use for that extra 25 damage you know consumption i can eat that but yeah, these are pretty much a lot of the changes they did for Respawn Entertainment. We didn't go over all the patch notes. There were some serious patch notes. We only went over the important stuff. But let me know what you guys think about Loba in Season 5. Let me know what you about to think about these Season 5 changes to the map, to the overall meta. Rest in peace for Pathfinder mains, including myself. But yeah, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like this video if you found it before. Minute, subscribe for more Apex Legends content. With that being said, Shannon here, and I'm out. Yeah.